we can live life from two modes, the mode of going after what we want or the mode of fending off what we don't want. And that determines whether or not we have a chance at reaching our goals and what our life will be like. What are you guided by? By what you want or by what you don't want? Often we're not aware which of these two is motivating and pushing us to do what we do or which mix of these two. And it's hard to tell from the outside. Stay tuned to find out why life on the defense is harder, what a balance between offense and defense can look like, and how to shift more and more into going after what you want. Hey everyone, welcome to Becoming an Expert at Self-Leadership. I'm Micah, a psychologist. So, depending on the different experiences we've made in life so far, we all have a different inner motivational landscape. What I mean by that is that we have a different inner mix of a drive to go after what we want and a drive to avoid what we don't want. Having both of these present itself is healthy, natural, necessary. But avoiding what we don't want can also become an obstacle in successful self-leadership when our drive to avoid takes over and becomes our default. I don't want to get hurt, so I will not allow anyone to come close to me. I will unconsciously destroy any spark of growing emotional intimacy in close relationships. I don't want to fail, so I will stick to the status quo, even if that's less than who I could become and it ultimately frustrates me. I don't want to be alone, so I will be extra clingy with this person. I don't want to be criticized, so I won't say what I really think. I'll avoid confronting topics and not really show who I truly am. I don't want to experience discomfort, so I'll avoid leaving my comfort zone at all costs. These are all avoidance goals. Goals where you're moving away from something that's negative or seems negative and intolerable to you. The opposite would be approach goals. Goals where you're moving towards something that matters to you. Avoidance goals make life harder in two ways. Firstly, you can never reach them. The goal not to get hurt, not to be criticized, not to fail, not to experience discomfort, uncertainty, vulnerability. You can't ever reach that. As long as we are alive, we are vulnerable to these experiences and we'll go through them from time to time. Avoidance goals are goals only dead people can successfully reach. And they require a permanent vigilance. As soon as you've manage to avoid a threat in a situation, the next situation will come up where you need to be on the constant lookout for that threat that needs to possibly be fended off. And this creates a lot of stress, anxiety, and it puts your nervous system into a state of chronic high alert. The second way avoidance goals make life harder is because they stand in the way of getting your longings, needs, desires met, and your hopes and dreams fulfilled. Avoidance goals actively compete with your desires and needs. And if you haven't analyzed this for yourself, it happens outside of your awareness. So avoidance goals are what prevents us from doing the things we would need to do to get our dreams fulfilled. This keeps you stuck in life, pulled back and forth by what you want and your avoidance goals and avoidance behavior. Our psyche is guided by both, even if they seem contradictory. That could mean yearning for an intimate relationship, but acting in ways that undermine any chance of a relationship lasting. It could mean pining for the next step in your career, but saying no to any offers and opportunities that would take you there. It could mean knowing all about the healthy habits that you want to implement, but not feeling motivated to invest the effort 
that's necessary. You can see how tricky this is, especially because this happens mostly outside of our conscious thinking. We're mostly not aware that the reason we feel pushed from inside to self-sabotage is because we want to avoid something, getting hurt, criticized, failing, experiencing discomfort. Our brain actually creates our picture of reality in a way that both represents reality, but also distorts it so that it becomes favorable to our inner purposes, also the ones we're not aware of. And if we've got a strong inner sense to avoid, our brain will make reality look like avoiding is logical and necessary. So if you haven't sorted this out for yourself, you won't notice all the details, facts, and possibilities that speak for going after your dreams because your brain will simply not show them to you. The brain can't represent all possible interpretations. It would cost too much energy and time. We wouldn't be able to do anything. So it usually just sticks with the ones that have worked well in the past and that serve our motives, the unconscious and conscious ones. So the brain fabricates logical reasons for your avoidance goal and for your specific avoidance behavior. So if someone has the goal of not getting hurt in relationships, that's the avoidance goal. And the behavior they choose to avoid that feeling of hurt or rejection, that could be anything. It's very varied. It could be never really committing in relationships. And that's the avoidance behavior. And the brain will fabricate the reason that's necessary to support that behavior. And that could look like, well, everyone else is just stupid or somehow not up to my standard. Or if it's not everyone, then at least the people that I've met that are available for an intimate relationship, I just haven't met the one. I haven't met that perfect person. And that will be what the person will say and what they will think is the reason why they haven't committed. But actually it's their unconscious avoidance goal. Or someone could have the avoidance behavior of being very clingy and the brain will fabricate the logical reason. Well, you should be clingy. This person hasn't responded to the text within 10 minutes. Or avoidance behavior could be to avoid difficult conversations, disagreement. And the way the brain makes this seem logical is because it will tell you that, well, disagreement is a bad idea. Conflict destroys relationships. Although it doesn't. But that's not what the brain will say. Or if someone has a strong motive to avoid failing, that person's brain will make it seem like all the career options out there are unattractive and unfitting. I've not come across a career that seems appealing to me or that would suit me. Or if someone has a strong motive to avoid discomfort, the brain will make any step outside of the comfort zone seem like something completely ludicrous, dangerous, and risky. To really feel pumped excited and hopeful about something. You need to learn to comfort that part in you that is afraid of getting hurt and disappointed. That will allow it to take a step back from being overly active and it will allow your brain to show you a version of reality that is supportive of your dreams. To stop sabotaging yourself and your relationships, you need to comfort that part. Otherwise, it will always take over the steering wheel outside of your awareness. That inner part says, it's no use. You won't be able to make this relationship last. 
You won't be able to take that next step in your career. You won't be able to stick with those healthy habits. What are you thinking? And it's not worth it anyway. The only thing you can really do is to make sure things don't get worse. So better stay safe behind your walls. And you wouldn't be able to handle the disappointment that is sure to come. And you can turn to this inner part and say, I see you, I get you. I understand where your hesitation and fear is coming from. Disappointment is very painful and you don't want to go through that. Thank you for taking care of me and protecting me. At the same time, the only way for me to live life the way that I want to, according to what matters to me and in alignment with my values and dreams, is if I'm sometimes willing to take the risk of being disappointed. Also, I've realized that you underestimate what I'm capable of. You underestimate how effective it is to pursue goals most of the time. And you underestimate my ability to reach my goals. I know that if I try over time, I'll be able to make the changes that I long for. If you keep coming to a certain frustration point repeatedly, ask yourself what you're doing to sabotage your dreams. How are you contributing to staying stuck? How is your brain distorting reality in a way that makes it seem like life on the defense is the best choice? Thanks for sticking around. I hope you got an aha moment or some positive motivational wind from this video. Subscribe if you want to see more videos on this channel. Leave a like if you like the video. And maybe a comment. It's not only me that's interested, the whole community is. Check out the links in the description box. You'll find a link to my weekly self-leadership newsletter and my brand new course on mental habits. Till next time, take care and remember that it sometimes requires courage to risk disappointment to get your dreams fulfilled. And going after what you want does make a difference and you are capable of making that difference.